I want to take the time to give an overview of RIP2 and the RIP series altogether. Let me start by saying longevity means a lot to me. This is Robbie Robinson, 74 years old, still training, still have incredibly strong peak biceps, following the principles that he'd been following for many years, giving the same advice, sticking to what's worked best for him. Tony Pearson, 63 years old, same thing, keeping his conditioning and his muscle as much as he can as a 60-something-year-old. These are the epitome of longevity. I started this business, this man was only 38, and I think Robbie Robinson would have been 49. So for all of the years that they've been doing this, and including a guy like Clarence Bass, the epitome of longevity, all of the years that they've been doing this, consistency is what I really respect the most. This guy talked about a diet rich in whole grains by the time he got to RIP2. Look at his dinner, slightly over 600 calories, whole grain rice and beans, diced carrots, diced pear, yogurt, and two slices of whole wheat toast. 732 calories for his dinner alone. He would start his day off with a banana. You can see he was really into fruits and vegetables, more toward a vegetarian life. Whole oats, protein powder, milk, and bananas. Look at the uh, alternatives. The breakfast, the lunch, very simple, was a pear, uh, a banana, carrot, yogurt. So you can see his breakfast was nearly 630 calories, a predominantly vegetarian breakfast. Look at the lunch. Whole wheat peanut butter sandwich, plain yogurt, just about 670 calories, and two apples for a mid-afternoon snack. And you can see dinner, rice and beans, over 700 calories, two slices of whole wheat toast. You could see he also had vegetables once again more vegetarian in his pursuit he was 163 pounds at this time and still two percent body fat so he changed his diet significantly from the last book which i think is incredible because it shows that sometimes you have to switch your diet in order to maintain results or your body will get stale and you can see his serratus muscles and all his ab muscles. His stomach is nice and flat on a diet that's nearly 2,700 calories a day. High in fruit, high in vegetables, high in whole grains, but not very high in protein. You didn't see any beef on there. You didn't see fish, just mostly eggs, yogurt, and milk, and protein powder. You saw a lot of protein powder there. And again, at the time, these people, their concern was to be lean throughout the abdomen. So they were really trying to watch their health while bodybuilding. This was a 50-year-old bodybuilder, Bill Pearl, one of my favorite uh, bodybuilders of all time, by the way. Clarence was predominantly a bodybuilder, though. Make no mistake about it. Weightlifting was 90% of his workout routine, very little Cardio, not as much as you would think, keeping her body fat this low. I like this tricep kickback. Look at it. On the incline bench, really squeezing at the top, elbows nice and high and fully locked out. That is a great tricep extension. So you might want to try that one time. But if you're trying to get the roadmap, this guy is giving you some game. I would say since about 2010, 2015, ish, everyone has been about evidence based, evidence based because they think they own. Uh, the idea of exercise and diet. This guy, the RIP books was much, no more than a diary that gave evidence on how he changed his physique from 175 pounds down to a 2.4% best abdominals in the Mr. America competition against some really stiff competition, including Tony Pearson in 1978. The proof is in the pudding. If you're not talking about bulk, this guy was really shredded, I call him, and I have called him in the past the father of aesthetic bodybuilding. When we started reading uh, muscle magazines back in the early and mid-80s, his advertisements were everywhere, and of course, this juxtaposition of this really muscular guy with uh, who looked kind of old, I call him Muscle Man Frazier, 
nowadays. But I'm telling you, back in the 80s and early 90s, when he was advertising his ripped books in the, the muscle magazines, this was your idea of what it meant to be cut, 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 cut. And again, his books serve as nothing more than his diary and his roadmap to how he got to where he was. So it's very important that you understand. That's him at 155 pounds, 2.4% body fat. His cardiovascular exercise at this time was nothing more than riding his stationary bike or riding his bike outside. He would only do it for 30 minutes a day at this time. When he started, he was 175 pounds. Arthur Jones told him to drop 20 pounds if he wanted to get into competitive bodybuilding. This is him at 30 years old. And as you can see, still had visible abs. And he was just beginning his bodybuilding career. He was a weightlifter and an overall athlete in high school. More gymnastic stuff. Here he is at 163 pounds, 2.8% body fat. In 1978, uh, you could see he's much fuller and, you know, very, very conditioned. He talks about using Anavar uh, and Deca. He talks about his stack, how much uh, he was using, uh, that he was eating about 3,000 calories a day at that time, 200 uh, grams of protein and 100 grams of carbs, and he was 165 pounds, and he got up to 4.5% body fat. So if you're interested in knowing how he got that look. And by the way, Tony Pearson won that 1978 Mr. America in which he competed in when he was 44. Look at him here. Once again, 163 pounds, around about 2.9% body fat. And he had done steroids. Again, you could see that I posted it earlier. But 3,000 calories, 200 grams of protein. 100 grams of carbs. That's how he got this particular look. All right, there you have it. All right. What we're going to do now is something called reactive neuromuscular training, plyometric push-ups. That means I'm going to explode off the ground and elevate my hands so they're not touching the floor and allow my body to eccentrically just fall back into place and pop right back up quickly. We're going to do 10 like that. I might add a clap in between. That will show that I have a lot of explosive air between my hands at the terminal end and the floor, meaning I push myself up high enough to clap my hands. All right? Uh, I got 10 here. We can do this together, or you could just do 10 regular push-ups. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Nine, ten. All right. Very simple exercise. Reactive neuromuscular training is nothing but plyometrics. And plyometrics are great for developing power, explosiveness. So if you want to be able to actually hit a golf ball further, uh, be able to knock a baseball out of the park, throw a football further, punch harder, building power is important. So it's not just building muscle. As a matter of fact, you may see some skinny guys in the ring and they have super power. That's because they have a lot of explosive and a lot of conditioning during reactive neuromuscular training. And a lot of times they use medicine balls for that. But again, this is for people without friends or additional equipment. So push-ups from the floor. The next thing is going to mimic that compensatory acceleration training. But the difference is you will not be leaving the floor. Say for example, I'm able to do a smooth 40 to 50 push-ups, and that's nice. I might get a nice pump from that. I might develop some nice uh, endurance in terms of uh, muscular endurance, even a bit of muscle size because I'm building up those slow twitch muscle fibers, making them grow as well. But when I do compensatory acceleration training, it's to develop power. So what does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? It means I don't want to do as many repetitions. I just want to do the few that I do, which is about 10, as fast as humanly possible in order for me to create more speed throughout my movement. The more speed I get, the more athletic I become. 
And when you're trying to become more athletic in any endeavor, you want to be able to accelerate with speed. And that includes powerlifting as well. So a powerful bench press, which I used to have. Now I'm probably slightly better than average. That's because I don't get to train in a gym. But one day I'll get back to the gym and possibly you'll see. I'm getting closer to 50, so it's going to be hard. But you'll see, I think. Don't hold me to it. All right, I'm going to do compensatory acceleration training, very much like plyometrics or reactive neuromuscular training, fast. So I'm not going to fatigue myself, but I'm going to go really fast for 10. And go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm all but allowing my hands to come up off the ground. I'm trying to develop speed, not endurance. So that's why I kill it at 10, even though I could do a lot more. All right, here we go. We're gonna go into the dip, and what we're gonna do is muscular density training or pure hypertrophy training. We're using time under tension to bang out 10 repetitions in order to force growth in the muscle. So, as we do this, Proper time under tension to force growth will take about 35 to 50 seconds to complete the exercise. So it's down, squeeze at the top, one, down, squeeze at the top, eccentrically come down, smooth, 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 and up, 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 squeeze, that's three, and it's about three to four seconds per rep, and bring it up, squeeze at the top, four, down, 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 and squeeze at the top, five, and six, already 30 seconds in, seven, come down slow, eight, nine, and down slow, 10. And that's a 45 second set of 10 repetitions to develop my triceps with the dip off the bench. Muscular density training specifically focuses on time under tension in order to develop muscle size. So if you're doing this at home and you can go faster and try to do reactive neuromuscular conditioning or compensatory acceleration training, it's not gonna develop beautiful triceps. In order to do that, you need to take your time going down for about three seconds and up for about one to two seconds. The reps should be between three and five seconds from top start to finish. From eccentric to concentric, okay? All right.